Let me preface this video by saying that all entertainment pushes a message. Sometimes it's superficial, sometimes it's deep, sometimes it's highly manipulative and bold, sometimes it's subdued and passive, sometimes it's political and cliché, sometimes it's personal and individual, but it's pushing a message nevertheless. And it seems that there are people who just either never really gave it much thought, or they've forgotten. My issue is when it becomes a refined, scholarly kind of message that you'd expect from a committee or, or a diversity seminar or something. You know, rather than an organic kind of message you might find from an individual. I don't like my entertainment to feel like a well-produced diversity seminar. The more it feels like that, the less I enjoy the entertainment. The more it feels like that, the harder it is for me to put on the mindset comfortably in order to enjoy the entertainment. Because, I mean, most types of entertainment that makes it somewhere in the mainstream has something decent about it, you know? And if you put on the right mindset, you can enjoy it. But when I'm expected to put on this... this is the the scholarly lens the diversity scholarly lens thing man i it it it's it's uncomfortable i don't like feeling like that it makes me feel like it it makes me feel like i'm a sheep if i if i put on that mindset it's just like wow this is how you're supposed to think it's just like uh no i i don't like that that makes me very very uncomfortable when movies do it that way you know now if it's something like I said, if it's something that's coming from an individual, it, it's the director, it's the, 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 the person who wrote the, 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 it's the screenwriter, maybe it's the original author if it's based off of a novel, you know, there's, there's something that, there, there, there's some message other than the diversity training shit, you know? It, when it feels like a diversity training seminar, it's no longer entertainment to me, it's propaganda. But we're experiencing creative bankruptcy, so companies are grasping at anything they can. Companies are starting to learn that you can't expand your audience any more than a certain point, or you end up losing the largest part of your audience. Over the past few years, entertainment companies and the actors and people who are associated, who are, who are working for those entertainment companies, are becoming more and more bold in critiquing the audience's that don't like their sorry excuse for entertainment. You know, the, a lot of the stuff that's been put out recently. They label the audiences as something that ends in ist or phobic, as if that's going to help gain them more of an audience. I'm sure it makes them feel good, though. And, and are there toxic audiences? Sure, for, for just about anything. They're, you're going to find some toxic people. You can't judge all of the audiences that don't like the, the particular content as being like that. Look, being that bold against your audiences might work for a period of time, as it has for the past few years. But just like everything else, it's eventually going to be like the boy who cried wolf. And I think we're getting close to reaching that point. Disney is doubling down on everything while they recycle their old content as live action. They're the most creatively bankrupt entertainment company out there now. And they have the rights to so many beloved franchises that they are destroying. You know, this same concept applies to politics, you know, and politicians. If you try to expand your audience too aggressively, you end up losing the majority. If you inconvenience or criticize the majority of your audience too much, you know, in order to pacify the small minority, you end up hurting and losing the majority. No amount of wishful thinking or shaming will change that. Just saying.